Hello guys and welcome today to Gate of Theories. Today is our hundredth video, that is crazy, and so we decided to make a big video for you guys. So you've heard of the Pixar theory, you've heard of the DreamWorks theory, you've heard of some other of our timeline theories. Well now, be prepared for the one you've been requesting the most. The ultimate timeline theory, yes, we've been working on this one for ages and we finally have it ready just in time for our 100th video. So anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into this one. So, to start off the ultimate timeline theory, we're looking at the prehistoric era first before we move on. So, this is the start of the timeline where we have a prehistoric era. The first film in this era is The Land Before Time, which is then followed by The Good Dinosaur, then the Croods, and then the start bit of Minions where we see them in the past. These films help us get introduced to the first early life on uh, the planet. We have dinosaurs, we have early humans, and we have Minions as well. Then we move on to the Ice Age franchise, uh, where we see that animals are starting to get smarter. We don't really interact much with humans in these films, but we do see animals and we do see them getting smarter. The humans are obviously there and are obviously doing well, but we don't tend to see them after the first movie. So we just assume they're there, they're growing, they're also learning, but we do get to see animals are starting to get smarter. So that is the prehistoric era, that's the start of the time. We then move up to about 800 AD, nothing really happens where there's a film between these sort of uh, areas. So we move on to about 800 AD on our timeline, where we see How to Train Your Dragon franchise. So we're seeing humans are now quite smart, they've learned the mastery of tools, they've got tools, and we also get introduced to dragons, and obviously they go and ride on the dragons. Then we move on slightly forward just in time, where we see Brave and Shrek. Now these films are happening at the same time, but they're just happening in different places across the world. In Brave we see that humans are getting smarter, we also get introduced to Boo and some magic. While in Shrek we see that dragons are slowly starting to disappear and there's one left. We also get to see more magical creatures appearing on the land. Now these are taking part, place in different parts of the world but they are in the same time. After Brave and Shrek we kind of skip a bit of the time period and we come to about the 1400 AD. This is where we start to see magic is becoming more of a thing and there's more creatures that we can interact with. We also see tiny creatures as well as trolls in this era. So the first film in this bit is Tangled and Frozen, which you'll know from the Tangled and Frozen theory, uh, they take place at the same time. There'll be a card up there to go and click to see that one if you want more information on that. So these are the early ones and we obviously see magical creatures in Frozen and obviously we also see magic in Tangled with her hair. In the same time as Frozen and Tangled are also taking place, somewhere within Europe we reckon if the Earth was the same and all these films worked on an Earth sort of structure, it'd be that sort of continent of Europe. In another part of the world we see Moana taking place where the demigod Maui and we see that magic and how humans are advancing across other parts of the world. We also see at the same time as that, we also see Cuba and the Two Strings, further probably up north from where Moana has taken place. No one here, but we also see magic is getting a lot stronger there too. We then move a couple of hundred years further into the future to about the 1800s, and the first film we see is Robinson Crusoe. In this film we get first introduced to pirates, we also see that animals are definitely getting smarter and they interact with Robinson Crusoe on the island. We then move on to Pirates and Adventurous Scientists. In this film it is set in the Victorian times, we get to see how smart humans again, obviously with the science fair in that. At the same time as this going on, we also see Box Trolls, another film set in the Victorian times. This is the first time we get introduced to trolls as a creature in this sort of universe. You could argue we've seen some maybe in Shrek, but they're more mainstream now and they're obviously hidden in box trolls. Just a few years after those two films, we get introduced to another film, A Troll in Central Park. This is where we see humans are gradually getting more smart, we see their development. We also see how trolls are developing at the same time. We then move on closer to more 2000 AD. These films are trolls, where we get introduced to the concept of miniature creatures as well as how trolls are developing. We then move on to Horton Hears a Hue, where we get to see the miniature creatures. This sort of time period we've definitely seen a lot of miniature creatures in the timeline. We also see how animals are adapting and getting smarter. At the same time we move on to Thumbelina, where we see that magic is still a thing as well as the miniature creatures in this sort of time. The next film here is epic. This is the first key moment really 
where miniature creatures interact with human beings, obviously in this one, and so the two now know of it, each other's existence. The final film in this little block is Smurfs. This is where humans find out about more and more about miniature creatures and about the magic they are using. We then move on to the early 2000s, so from about 2000 to 2020 AD, where we start to see magic is really a thing again, for the first time really since 800 AD, since we've seen Brave and Shrek. So the first film in this little bit is Rise of the Guardians. Obviously in Rise of the Guardians, we get to see the Guardians come back and they're obviously quite magical. We also see how the magic affects the kids' lives in this film. The next film is Anastasia. This is where we get introduced to Bartok. We then move on to Bartok the Magnificent. This is where we see magic is getting stronger and stronger in this film. This film is followed by The Secret of Nymph, where we see magic is stronger and stronger and stronger. And throughout this bit, we all see that magic is starting to get stronger and stronger and stronger. We then move on to House of Magic. This is where we start to see that the magic is also spreading into the human world where humans can start using a bit of magic and getting involved with it. The next film after that is quite key, which comes is Coraline. In Coraline, we get introduced to a magical world that turns out to be the magical world that we see in a lot of other films. Now, this is where we get to first see the magical world, which will become more apparent in the next couple of films. Rockadoodle is the next film which shows where magic, the magic world which we see in Coraline has suddenly become inside a kids book so that people get to know about it. By the time the next film comes along humans have now worked out how they can get from one world to another just as the magical creatures can and this film is of course Hotel Transylvania 1 and 2. The next film we see in the timeline is The Corpse Bride, where we see again see magic is quite strong and we get to interact more in the magical world with this film. The final film in this little section is Paranorman. This is where we see the magical world and the human world become more entwined with each other as more magical creatures are coming into the human world in this bit. We then move on to the next lot of films which take place between 2020 to 2100. This is an era where we start to see humans and animals getting way smart. These animals and humans, the, the progress they make in these couple of years is huge and is very key to what is going to happen to the planet as we move on and who's going to be the more dominant species. Will it stay humans? Will it be animals? The first film we get to see in this bit is Surf's Up. We get to see animals in this film getting smarter. We also get to see this in films like Over the Hedge and Ratatouille. Ratatouille is also quite an important film as it gets to show us how smart animals really are getting. Obviously Remy moves the chef by his hair and makes him be able to cook world-class foods. So we obviously know how smart they've become and obviously we see a little civilization of rats and how smart they are, they act more like human, they're more humanoid, and it just shows how smart they've actually got. The next film we see is The Pebble and the Penguin. This is quite key as we can see that animals now can travel around the world due to their smartness and intelligence that they've been able to do that now. The next films we get to see how marine creatures are doing as well. This has been in Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, A Turtle's Tale 1 and A Turtle's Tale 2. We get to see that as well as on land creatures, the marine life is also getting a lot smarter and they've also learned to travel around the world uh, if they need to find someone, as examples in both films. The next film is An American Tale, where we sort of see the same things as in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. The next film after that is Rio 1 and 2, where again we see animals getting progressively smarter. After Rio 1 and 2 comes open season, this we get to see how animals are getting more smart as well as humans. The film after that is The Secret Life of Pets, which again shows the progression in animals' smartness and IQ levels. This is followed by Flushed Away, which obviously reveals how smart rat life are getting in that film. As we see they've got city down there, pretty much like London, but in rat terms. Yeah. We then move on to Madagascar and penguins of Madagascar and we obviously know how smart these guys have become. I mean the penguins are incredibly smart, they can work ships, they can build planes, they know how to work technology and it shows how smart these animals have become that they're pretty much now on par with humans in terms of intelligence. We then see ants and bugs life which were suspiciously too close to be the same which was why I think this on the timeline theory could be a thing but anyway we see them in this part we see that the bugs are also getting smarter and we see they've built little civilizations as well. 
The next film we then see how animals have now got smart enough that they can outsmart humans to get away if they need. This is of course Chicken Run where they build a plane to leave the farm because they don't want to be made into pies for the humans. Boss Baby is the next film on our timeline. This shows us how humans are getting smarter and also how the kids of the world are getting smarter and how we start off quite smart as babies but then become unsmart again as we grow up but then become smart the older we get. The next film we see is Wallace and Gromit. This we get to see that technology is starting to rise up in the human world as well as the animal world and they're getting very smart. We also see that they, they can interact together as Wallace and Gromit do. The next film followed by this is obviously Shaun the Sheep which interacts well with Wallace and Gromit. In this film we see how animals interact in the human world and how they are smart enough to do so without getting sus the humans getting suspicious or anything like that. The next film after that is Turbo, we obviously see them interacting more and more humans and animals together as their intelligence goes up. Obviously we know in Turbo, Turbo gets to race in the race with humans, he obviously wins. So it shows that they now see each other more as an equal par. Humans obviously still see themselves more in charge as they still run the world, but animals are now on par that can be trusted with their intelligence and obviously their speed and skill as they are now in human races. We then see the adventures of Bolt and how the animals can interact with humans and how sometimes humans can trick animals into thinking they are more with Bolt but obviously in the end Bolt realises and it just shows to the intelligence of the dog and what the intelligence of animals have got during this film. We then move on to the B movie which is quite pivotal in this bit because this is the first time we get to see humans can talk to the animals, the bees. Now this is quite a pivotal moment because it shows to see the tip that the difference between the two has suddenly been broken and they are sort of now on par. The next film is All Dogs Go to Heaven 1 and 2. This film we see the last bits of magic really in the timeline and dogs are coming back from the dead but they can talk to humans now which shows again the intelligence of animals have gone up even with the, them being dead shows they still have an intelligence they just hadn't released yet but now they've come back to life, they can, and they can talk to humans. We then see a hop where we get to see animals and humans interacting with each other again and talking to each other and sort of seeing each other as an on par sort of term. Still humans think they're bigger and better and smarter, but it's now becoming more apparent that the two are in sync with each other in terms of intelligence levels. We then see creature comforts we get to see that humans and animals are now interacting more and more with each other and it's becoming more of a normal thing. They're even interviewing animals in this film. We then move on to Up. In Up we get introduced to the first bit of smart, real smart technology. Now obviously some of the animals haven't all progressed to be able to talk to humans through their own vocal cord, but the smart technology that is in Up shows a way that they can. And this is shown so that the humans and animals can now interact even if there are even if the vocal cords haven't quite developed in some of the animals as they've evolved. The final film in this bit is the Peanuts movie. We now get to see that animals can interact fully with humans and they're all living together. We then move on to an era where aliens and smart technology become the main focus of humans and not the fact that animals are getting smarter. Obviously that is still occurring but it's now all focused on aliens and what's going to happen between the humans and the aliens. The first film in this bit is Alien Adventure. Aliens do come down to Earth, but the humans just don't interact with them and neither do the aliens interact with humans. But this is the first sign that something's going to happen. The next film is Home. This is the first time humans and aliens interact with each other. We also get to see how smart technology has become. The film after that is Megamind. We get to see humans interact with the aliens more. Obviously, Megamind coming and being a superhero. And we get to see how strong aliens actually are compared to us humans. And we also see the in difference in intelligence between the two species. We then see Monsters vs. Aliens. This is a film where we get to see some animals who have evolved funnily or we get to see some actual monsters from the past or monsters but there's monsters from either science experiments but they're here and they are used to combat aliens in a fight. This is the first time we see sort of a vicious relationship between the two where it is needed some intervention from some monsters 
to take them out. So that's Monsters vs. Aliens in this timeline. The next film is key to the development of humans and obviously life on Earth and humans who don't live on Earth. This film, of course, is Titan A.E. In this film, we get to see humans develop spacecrafts and leave the Earth. So, some of the humans have left Earth in this film. Now, the humans who leave Earth in the spacecrafts get lost and they end up living there for generations in space trying to work out where they are. While they're in space, they also interact with aliens in the year 3028, as it says in the film. After the invasion of aliens has occurred on Earth, and while the, some of the humans are still up in space, we get to see a time of more smart technology occurring here on Earth. The first film that we see this bit is the end of the Minions film and the Despicable Me franchise. In here we get to see how far technology has come in terms of weapon development, Obviously, we see the thing that can shrink the moon into the size of a ball in Despicable Me. And we see a lot of tech, smart technology that can be used as weapons, but it's also very smart in how it's made. We then move on to The Incredibles, and we get to see that some humans now have superpowers. Now, humans have superpowers due to science, not because they naturally occurred. Some of them might have naturally occurred due to evolution, but mainly it's because the scientists in the film have injected some humans with these special powers. This is really noticeable in The Incredibles when we see Elastic Girl being able to fly a plane that would require more than just the average human who develops superpowers to know how to do. This shows that they've been given superpowers and not, you know, develop them. We also see the first big AI moment in The Incredibles, of course, Syndrome's AI machine and how it now can think for itself. The next film is Wreck-It Ralph. In this film, we see a basis of technology, but we see that inside the technology, some components can now think for themselves, of course, in Ralph and the other characters from the games, and that they can interact between games through the switches, which is quite worrying because that develops for an AI system. We then see Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Technology now has got so smart that it can turn water into food, we also see that the machine can now produce life from making water into food animals, which is quite cool. The next film is Toy Story. We now see that the AI system has managed to work its way into toys and can make toys come to life, especially those battery powered. The next film is Big Hero 6. In this we see loads of smart technology. We see the small tiny robots first developed that can build cities in a daze and can also destroy them in a day. We also see what sort of technology humans have been building with the suits they make and also the technology projects they're working on in Big Hero 6. The next film we then see is the Lorax. We see how far technology advances in this film and now they are creating robots. The final film in this little section is Wally. -E. In this section we see that humans have made a complete utter mess of the place with technology. We also see the end of really animals getting smarter due to the technology era just because of how much technology and stuff are humans have become the dominant species but obviously something happens and they absolutely wipe out the planet they cause too much problems so they go into space as well they may even meet up with some of the people in Titan AE who are lost but they go into space for a bit and then come back at the end of Wally, -E where we get to see it all being cleaned up and that humans and now animals can be sustained on the planet once again. So now humans are back on the planet, another 50 years occurs and then we get Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Now this is a film which pretty much changes everything. It is very key and this is why this film is key. So in Mr. Peabody and Sherman we obviously see now humans have returned, everything is more, more back to normal but technology has got real far. We also get to see animals being smarter again and coming back to live with humans, and that is Mr. Peabody and how smart he's got. He may be an exception, but because we don't see many other animals become that, but Mr. Peabody is there. And in this film, they've now created technologies that they can make time machines. But while Mr. Peabody and Sherman are traveling in their time machine, something happens so they wipe out the entire of humanity completely at this point completely wipe them out, leaving just animals. Now, it didn't affect any of the marine life or anything uh, at all, so the marine life can carry on the way they are, getting smart 
and smarter as they've been under the surface recently due to smart technology and obviously things happening to the earth that's meant animals haven't progressed as much as humans but the sea life isn't as affected by this but the animal life left on the land is really affected by this because suddenly everything goes human and we are left with just animals but the animals have also been affected by the cause of pollution and all the things that we see in Wally, the inhabitable climates and stuff like that that means they're not as well left as they could be now that humans have gone due to the accident happened with the time machine in Mr. Peabody and Sherman. This leads us into a time period called the regrowth of animals where we get to see animals becoming smarter again and become the rulers of the planet. The first film we see in this bit is Kung Fu Panda. We see animals getting smart and living on the land again as properly and walking, talking to each other, all interacting. We see that this is still in the early development of them coming back and they haven't quite worked out to build the smart technology since that massive event in Mr. Peabody and Sherman, but we do get to see them living again, interacting with one another and being the dominant rulers of Earth now that humans have been wiped out due to the time machine accident. Shark Tale, now because Mr. Peabody and Sherman's time machine accident didn't affect the marine life, we get to see that Shark Tale, they've now got cities, they're so advanced down there in technologies and we get to see the lives of what's happened to the marine lives and how smart animals really have got in that film. The next film is Chicken Little, we get to see animals have now progressed on the land as well to be getting smarter and smarter and we get to see some early technology with them and the lives they're living in that. Which then leads on to Zootropolis or Zootopia depending on where you're from. This film we get to see that animals have now got so smart that they are now living the lives humans left with the smart technologies in place. The final film in this little section is Sing. This is just a carry on from Zootropolis and we see how far they've advanced. After Sing we move a good couple of thousand years into the future to where we've seen that prey and predator of animals have all mixed and evolved into monsters. Now the first time we see this is Monsters University and Monsters Inc franchise. In Monsters Inc we get to see what has become of the world and how it is now run by monsters but they rely on human power so they've created technologies that can go back previous in time to before the events of even Mr. Peabody and Sherman to find this human power by obviously the scream and then it goes into the laugh power is how they generate the world. This is the film where we get to meet the young Boo who obviously learns how to use the doors and goes back and we get to see her in Brave again as she manages to time travel using the door system and has worked out how to get from her time to the monster's time to also back in time due to the doors and can appear anywhere in the timeline using her doors. She may become more of an important the more films we get in the timeline as she may be able to possibly save Mr. Peabody and Sherman's event from happening but at the minute she can just go between the time zones using the doors and the technology that is created by the monsters. The next film is Robots. Monsters have got so good with their technology that they go back in time to different eras of human life. Now they're seeing the humans their technology and use some of their technology but they also want to make humans again but they can't quite bring them through because that's obviously a hazard like the 2319 we see in Monsters Inc. So instead they decide to build their own versions of humans in robots but the robots get too smart for them and become the dominant race and rule out and get rid of all the monsters which is where we see robots happen is after they've destroyed all the monsters and beings and now it's just a robot world and we are all left with just robots. We then go on to cars 1, 2 and 3 and the robots decide to create talking cars and reproducing cars that can produce themselves. Now the problem with this was that the cars got too smart for the robots and take out the robots leaving just the cars behind is what we see in the end. Now the cars world does look a bit like a human world just because that the robots were built based off the monsters wanting to create them like humans so the memories became like the world which the cars also get which means that the world still looks human like from the earlier time but it's just because of the memories that they've pla placed in them from the monsters creating the early robots to look like that and the world to look like that due to the technology they've branded. So we are left with cars and that is the final film in the timeline and that is the timeline complete. As well as all this timeline going on we also see Inside Out Akira and all of this through with the emotions of people. So that is the ultimate timeline guys finished. Ugh. 
So if you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button and share it on social media so your friends can see because it's such a timeline that we want you to add to it and make your own. Tell us in the field section down below what you thought of the theory, what were the flaws, what was good about it. Can we add anything to the ultimate timeline theory? Give us your ideas down below. We'll try and respond to as many of you as possible. In fact, we're going to respond to all of your comments. If you put a comment down there, we will respond. So make sure you go on place and tell us what you thought of the theory. If you're new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button because we make top 10s, theories, timeline theories, and so much more every week. And we make two new videos a week. So you want to go and click it. And because you've stayed to the, fil to the end of the video, you obviously must like it. So make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, make sure you have that bell button click so you get notified when we make new videos because you're not going to want to miss them in the future, especially when we add more to the ultimate timeline theory and our other timeline theories is going to be one you're going to want to watch. So make sure you have that click. And as always, we've been here on Gate of Theories. Thanks for watching this video. It has been an epic video. It's been a long video, but thanks for staying till the end. And thank you for watching. Thanks, this has been our 100th video. Hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you on Tuesday with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.